Good evening, everyone, and this is your girl, Deb Chanel, from our family affair, Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we come together, we congregate, and we talk shit, okay? And I may have fallen off a ladder and <laughs> damn near killed myself, okay? But I'm still here to speak on it, okay? That that does not kill me makes me stronger, okay? Sit down, Lala. And that's the basis of where we're going with all of this. Now, the people that Candy keep flossing with, they may end up uh, being her demise. But you remember Whitney Houston? You remember Brandy? And you remember that man, uh, Clyde Davis? That's all I got to say. For anybody that can hear, let them hear. Anybody that can see, see on. Okay? And who, honey, Candy, we know you full of lies. You full of lies, girl. But we're going to be talking about her speak on it. I'm doing my recap, my review on what she was talking about uh, as far as this last episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Get into it. And then we're going to delve a little deeper. We're going to go a little deeper down that rabbit hole. So I'm going to try to make this uh, kind of shine in with what or tie it in. Uh, mesh it in to what we're trying to say or who is really uh, throwing their horns up and who they really serve. Now, you can basically believe it if you want to because, like I said, I come to my family about everything. <laughs> Even my personal issues, okay? But we all have examples. We all have explanations. We want proof, this, that, and the third. But you over at the house. We ain't got to have no proof. We just sit up there, throw out a subject, and we just let have, okay? But we're going to specifically be going into her speak on it, uh, her rendition, her review, her recap of what happened on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I want to say thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for stopping by, checking on me, wishing me well. And I am going to, on my next video, get into my shout outs and all of that because you know i like to shout out and i love to be telling people to go in them comments and read this that and the third because that person had it going on that person had it going on i'm like oh yes thank you hallelujah jesus this person can see okay but anyway let's go on and get into canon what she was uh focusing on or what she saw and wanted to speak on it her uh, little take on her perspectives of what happened on last night's showing, or not last night, but Sunday night's showing, which was March 1st. Okay, we got Candy. Candy says she didn't get the whole theme of Eva's baby shower. She didn't connect the dots. She didn't have to connect. Why did you have to connect the dots, Candy? Damn, your mama knew what the 60s and 70s were. Hell, she knew what the 40s and 50s were. Could you have asked her a clue about when they say, a flower baby shower and kind of the hippie look you knew about hippie hair anything that says hippie you know is marijuana is weed smoking is sex being thrown out is flowers everywhere the hippie thing back in the 60s and 70s honey that's they were like free will living they were doing what they want to do sex was not a boundary they didn't care who you were loving on when you were loving on it and, and it didn't matter they were just peace love and happiness don't you remember scooby-doo girl don't you remember scooby-doo in the mystery van and how they were dressed like hippies and flowers daisies was going everywhere but the right way girl and you Girl, you will be an OG one day. Let's get into it. You're not one of them millennial kids that they don't know this, they don't know that. Hell, you know about the struggle. Come on, just had you in the struggle. And she was going to do any and everything to get herself out the struggle by making this damn group called Escape. Now, she might didn't claim the name to fame, but she uh, definitely made y'all uh, rehearse. She made y'all to make every little dance uh, contest Anything that could put y'all name out there so she didn't have to work hard. Come on, just I'm tired. I'm finna make a win out of this one. I couldn't get it with my son, but I'm damn sure get it with my daughter. Now, some of y'all may say, hmm, was he a sacrifice? Meaning her son so Candy can pull the reins up and get more? I don't know. It's a sad thing to do, but I don't put nothing past Mama Joyce, okay? I don't put nothing past Mama Joyce, okay? But can I just really don't believe you did not know. You knew about hippies. You knew about sex and love. How the hell you didn't know about the flower? So that was just piss poor on your part. Piss poor on your part. And then if you didn't understand what the whole significant was of the theme of the baby shower, you could have called Cynthia Bader, okay? You could have called her. People in their 50s or in their middle 50s or hell, even in their 60s, it's a state of mind. The age may be getting older, but the brain is still working. So we can still get down. But that's what I'm saying, Candy. You have the resources out there throwing up that one-eye signal. 
Oh, sign. Girl, please. But anyway, you had the resources to tell. Hell, Google could have told you. You stay on social media. You should have been found that shit out. So I hold you accountable and all that satanic word and stuff you're doing. Oh, girl, you looking the dark side. Yes, and I'm wondering. Y'all remember way back, way back when, when we thought we had lost Auntie Bertha. But it was another aunt. And I ain't going to say she was sick or whatnot. But, hey, it was she a sacrifice? And Aunt Bertha, she better be watching out. Because I don't know. Get some weird vibes on that. How they trying to get rid of this OLG gang. And Candy trying to swing into doing film and all of that. We're going to have them to the restaurants. Because Todd Shaw ain't there. And then, up. Oh, but getting back to this speak on it type of uh, situation that's going back. Because, you know, I get out there yonder somewhere. And y'all had to be like, raining me in. Like Mark was telling Kenya, rain it in, rain it in. Y'all be saying, Deb, get your ass back out here. We talking about this subject. You don't went too far. You don't went too far there. Come on back. Come on back, girls. See the light. <laughs> Because y'all know I will go and I will take y'all there. <laughs> and so I know it, it's an hour long video and y'all cussing my ass out. Like, damn, Dale, didn't we tell you to stay in the 15 minute range? Didn't we tell you to stay in the 15 minute range? You know you can talk your ass off, but goddamn, sometimes you be talking shit and you're not staying focused. I hear you. I hear you. That's why I got it good. I'm going back to the uh, format. Okay? Then we got Candy calling out Shamil for cheating at the baby bottle game that they were playing a challenge. Okay? Like, damn, Candy. And there you go, that takeover spirit. You want to win everything. You want to win. Because I'm like, first of all, get they set the rules down to how you could navigate on getting that juice out of that bottle. Did they say you couldn't bite the nipple off like you claimed Shamir did? And we did have visual. It seemed like she was chawing on that nipple, trying to make a hole bigger than what it was. But did they, again, did they set the guidelines of how you can win this game? You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. With the nipple, you can only do this. Okay? Did they set those parameters? Set? If they didn't, it's fair in all love and war. You get that juice out the way you can't help me personally. And I have did it at one of them baby shower i unscrewed unscrewed the uh little knob or the little cap and i drunk that shit out and i won was it fair yes it was because they didn't set the guidelines i was just thinking out the box that's what you do when you try to win and you try to compete you think about every angle every side and how you can win but you didn't you didn't play that way candy you didn't play that way you like everything sometime i'm gonna say in black and white and, and, and you try to play the game fairly but then you talk about hiring people backs and try to be uh throwing your hands with a rock and hitting a glass house. And then you try to hide your hands like shit ain't happen. Yeah. I know how you get down. You're very competitive and you hate to lose. But damn, you lost in that kickball game y'all was going on. You were moving slow as hell and you thin as hell. That's the part I couldn't understand. That is the part I could not understand, Ken. But moving on from there, you lost there. You lost in a kickball uh, competition. Let me see what else you're going to lose at. Okay. But anyway. It just is what it is. Then you say, why would you want to be the one to play? No, I was asking that question. Since you saying you were just being, you know, fair and you, you uh, try to see everybody's points of view. You try not to get into stuff. Then why would you be in the mediator between Kenya and Tanya uh, playing off the two on uh, selling the idea that uh, Tanya should bring her husband, Mark, and support his gala? Hell, shouldn't uh, Candy should have been telling Tanya that you ain't Ma's wife. You don't need to be uh tooting your horn and Todd should be feeling kind of uh some way about it for the negative. You don't need to be trying to uh, uh pull up another man, okay? That that wife do that pulling up for her man. That that wife do that uh lead work for that man. You ain't got nothing to do with Ma, but you trying to act are y'all having a threesome around that candy? Are you Ma, Kenya, and Todd having a threesome girl? Uh I need to know because I know he get down like that because he sure want a portion. <laughs> Before that scandal got put up on y'all, but you know, it just ear with an ear, girl. Todd don't want to just have sex with you. He want to have sex with you and everybody else he can get to. Okay, and that's just the truth of the matter. And what's up with them sundials? Them four sundials right now. You praising the sun god now, Candy? What is it? I don't know. I'm just trying to say what I see, what I feel, and look at that X. And then you holding that Illuminati sign. That is Illuminati sign, guys. If you don't believe me, check it out. 
Look up signs. Illuminati symbols and signs. And it will show you. She's throwing them all out there. But y'all don't know. For the ones that are sheep. Y'all follow her. Y'all uh, take up for her. This, that, and the third. And you just don't know. She's a wicked woman. She is a wicked woman. But we ain't going to talk about that right now. We're just going to go on into what she was saying. And we're going to try to debunk or counteract. You know, she's just giving her opinion just like I'm giving mine. I'm speaking my truth. She's speaking her truth. But we're finding holes in her truth. That's all I'm saying. Um... Oh, and then she tried to say she did not want to ask that question about uh, asking Tanya would she bring Paul to the uh, event that Mark was hosting in lieu of Kenya. And I'm like, well, damn, why you, who, okay, who who asked you, Kenya? Was it the producers? Was it Kenya? Who, girl, who? Drop down, T, don't just, just come in your speak on in and tell us these are your opinions and, and this is how you feel about the situation. But then you're going to go ghost when somebody's asking you. Uh, who uh, who told you to ask that question? Okay, now nah, you want to go ghost and I say shit. See, that's why I don't like you, can you be fake, fraudulent, to a total foolery and uh, fuckery going on? Just give us the truth and be fabulous about it. Cause you let Kenya say everything. You say Kenya is good for the show. Uh, she say she make the show. Now Kenya don't make the show. Everybody make that show. It's just Nene and Kenya tend to show out. Tend to show out a little bit more. Okay. Now if we had to play who comes with it on the show. You will be gone. Cynthia will be gone. Eva damn show will be gone. And we just need to host up a new cast. Because Tanya's doing her job. Hell, I kind of even like Shamir. She be going for the gusto. Now, if we got rid of all y'all, bring some new players and things, it would probably be more interesting. But that show does not make or break if Kenya is not on it or if Nene is not on it. To me, Nene is just a favorite because she's been the outstanding long OG. But even she is coming with some weak shit this season and a couple of uh, seasons prior to that okay but y'all just going on oh i can't be replaced and beyonce i already told y'all you are irreplaceable don't think that you are irreplaceable okay everybody irreplaceable i'm just saying keeping it very real and 100 so why are you sitting up there talking about this that and the third mm -mm. and we're talking talking about the father and the son where the holy ghost the three trinity he ran two crosses what other third one i don't know and then he looked about half days in that picture and you look kind of wicked like i don't know what you finna do to him honey are you finna mk archer him or you finna or he finna mk archer you i don't know but you really changing changing for the dark side i should say but getting back on on to speak on it uh we had candy you talking about uh you don't hold grudges and this that and the third uh but technically let's get right on into it ever since you and portia have seemingly i don't know if it's true it may just be for television and both y'all need child checks it seems like y'all have some type of Agreeance that y'all gonna be in the same room y'all ain't gonna fight with each other just long as y'all don't talk about each other man y'all cool and candy don't bring up the candy coated factory saying this that third and trying to make her name look bad then y'all cool other than that we just take we just friendly with each other and we get we get, we keep it moving okay and i can understand it's what y'all need to be doing in the first place stop trying to act like y'all friends y'all kiki and y'all go up and uh have fun outside of this camera time because we don't believe it hell i don't believe it okay but anyway you go on and talk about you don't hold grudges you put things to the side but what kind of grudge you still holding this portion even when portia's going through these little things with dennis coming back and he had another infraction with four different women you know at night club type and club type hours when you going in your confessionals trying to talk about it uh-huh you be doing little shade and and this is on kenya i'm not kenya but on portia still to this day and you talking about you don't hold grudges what about the uh escape girls the scott sisters their mama joyce at some uh war show you was at i think it's the act uh a scalp or something like that musical wars whatever when you and tiny warren y'all still keep winning for that tlc type of um song that y'all wrote that they made a hit out of you know you still getting awards for that damn what else have you done with new artists new artists out here today candy that's what i want to know but you still don't like them scott sisters you weren't trying to get them no shine you gave them the very least amount of shine when it came to calling yourselves working together as a group okay because you were going around and saying it was your group 
Tiny goes around there and say it's an hour group. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. Tiny say hours, you say mine when you get in inter interviews. But technically, we all know you were a background singer and you did it well. Okay? Even though you're trying to be out there, you're trying to shine, 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 shine. But wasn't nobody checking for you because you had that deep voice. Every man is a woman. Yeah, it's kind of not. Every man is a woman. Okay? Something like that. Get some Aretha Franklin in your tone. Okay? Get them vocal cords going with some Aretha Franklin if you want to go there deep baby or some chaka con okay i feel for you i think i love you yes i get into that mess and y'all know i ain't feeling no pain i'm feeling my old self because i'm shoot god dog it i'm up here on some pain medicine and it's killing all of my pain and i'm loving it liking it and i am moving on with that whoo child but i'm still recovering but I'm still going to be out here doing what I do because ain't nothing going to stop me. Ain't no going to, ain't nothing going to stop me but the Lord, honey. So, everybody probably wished on my downfall or whatever. So, oh, it's good, good, good. You saw the tree. Okay, keep up with that same energy. Shit going to come back to you one day. Okay, may not you hit you, but it might hit your family. I'm just saying, don't wish karma on nobody. Don't wish karma on nobody. And don't do nothing wrong out there to nobody, okay? You can speak your mind. You do it very respectfully and pleasantly because that's what it is. It's not like you're going around gossiping or anything. You're just talking shit with your family or with your friends or whatever. And, oh, what we got over here ain't nothing but friend and family. So, we can talk our shit every day, all day, anything time we want to okay just as long as we keep it on uh what do you call it uh subject matter okay but anyway uh yeah so what's up with them scott sisters mama joyce that came up and said in one of y'all uh, award shows that yeah y'all gonna give out one more album one more album because she's no that's more money Todd can't touch because anything you're doing on your own, you say it come from your mouth, is yours. Anything that y'all do together is y'all's, meaning you and Todd. That's why Mama Joyce said, uh-uh, Candy, our money getting low. We need you to go do some more stuff with Escape, some more touring, okay? Even though Candy don't want to do it, she want to do her own thing. She don't want to be seen, connected with nobody but herself, bringing in all her ducats. But you just don't know, Candy. Todd in the background adding all that shit up, okay? Because a man will walk. When they get tired, when they get through with stuff, they will walk out on your ass same thing as a woman when she get fed up and you, you know a woman's race is who you don't want to deal with that okay but when a woman also get fed up they walk the fuck away too i'm just saying so mama joyce trying to get you to go on and do your own thing because she don't invest a hell of a lot in you from at birth she knew she saw she wanted you to be a part of hollywood okay Yes, Mama Joyce did. She done did all that hard work. She wants to return back, okay? See how Mama Joyce was pretty fox and fine? You see what I'm saying? That she had her two kids. She was going to do that thing. But my question is, why Candy Burst does not talk about her daddy? And she let her daddy marry her. And I'm questioning it now. Did anybody go to the courthouse and find out was a marriage license on Candy Burst and Todd Tucker? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Did the courthouse documents receive their... Um, marriage license because <laughs> it's all gonna be fake fraudulent and full of fuckery too and her dad it may not even be a minister that's practicing okay but have anybody just sat down and just said hmm why can't the dad is never shown on the show or why don't she ever go visit her daddy and have that side being played so i wonder is that gonna be off uh be uh he's gonna be in her new spinoff she got that they said that I hear my family. They talking about she got a, a, a spinoff show. Okay. Because I'm like. God damn. I don't want to see no the skate. You know. It, it, the, I want to see what Todd doing. I want to see what her Todd and the OLG is going on in Mama Joyce. Okay. That's what I want to see. Because if it wasn't for Todd, Mama Joyce, and other people coming for candy. Be it nice or be it uh, not so nice. We would have a show. We didn't have no folks up in now. Especially Aunt Bertha trying to tell Candy about her old ass uh, husband that's still going around here cheating and doing what he want to do and spending her money each which way but every each which way but the right way. Oh yes, and then she's trying to say bring her baby sister in now. That's her. Uh, uh, they got the same father, and trying to say they look alike. No, can we try to make the girl look like you? I see a difference. I know y'all got some big nose and, and lips and stuff, and y'all eyebrows kind of arched up. But are you doing that to that girl? Are you uh, giving her examples of how she can look a little pretty or whatnot? But she's pretty in her own self in her own skin but are you gonna try to use her as a sacrifice that i don't can I just, i'm just saying because you're looking kind of wicked and you're doing some wicked things and you just lying and trying to uh throw rocks at a glass house 
and you know it just is what it is now i was confused that is another hand signal that uh hand sign that it says that that's riley but i'm not really sure because she kind of like twinning a little bit too much between her and riley it's kind of like shocking but anyway you know that was candy that's candy you see life in candy there nothing but you know i was trying to do the darn thing be a mother but then there's another side to that pregnancy she was messing with a married man okay Candy Burris, where she was fooling around out there in the streets. They saying she was uh, dropping it low, spreading it wide, and riding it hard. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Now, she wasn't like this little girl, you know, that we see promising that's going to do the right thing. But, hey, she want to start them. She, her mother want to start them for her. So, maybe her mother introduced her to Hollywood, and she saw what she could bring. Because other mothers were doing the same thing to their children, trying to pimp them out for some dollars and whatnot and we have seen a lot of success stories and we have definitely seen more so a lot of horror stories that how the kids just break up or they disassociate themselves in their minds and they going out here doing everything and every, anything to stay you know trying to survive and trying to make their way still be in hollywood when hollywood done gave them up i'm just saying and we can thank tiny uh coattail harris for bringing um candy up into the fold as well all right but going back to the article um like i said she don't care too much about nobody and she damn sure don't care nothing about phaedra and don't want phaedra back so i'm really trying to um see why we can't let phaedra come back since we're bringing all these other people back and uh other people need to go why can't we bring phaedra back i think she don't did her time i think she has done her time for that crime and we need to have her come back now you you talking about ratings will go out the roof yes okay because can trying to be a little i don't know single actor and she think clyde davis can help her well i don't think i'm gonna keep saying about that you remember whitney houston okay girl do you remember whitney houston do you remember bobby christina okay do you remember it, girl Clyde Davis got his hands all over it. But hey, if you and your mama wants to do it, go ahead and do it, girl. Go do it. Do it. Do it till you're satisfied. Go on and do it. Do it. Do it till you're satisfied. Go on and do it. Yes. Do it till you're satisfied. But hey, all that's uh every time you have a pro, you're gonna have a con. There's always consequences when you do something out there. She's called karma. But anyway uh i'm just saying you you're not fair and you hold grudges because you still hold grudges against phaedra you still hold grudges against the scott sisters from escape you still hold grudges against portia you still hold grudges with nene uh because you always talk about the hbic you always talk about the queen and you know that's nene's claim to fame but you still keep uh, riding that horse and i'm like that's a dead horse can and put a fork in it it's done okay and then why are you talking to, why are you talking and talking taking up for ma and, and and his event why are you so invested why are you so worried about that i mean really candy should you be worried about how you messed up somebody's marriage or tried to mess up somebody's marriage because you thought block which is uh riley's father or dad you thought he was gonna leave his wife and his kids he had to come shack up with you and probably divorce his wife and be that what kind of mess is that okay what kind of did you learn that tricks of the trade from your mom girl i don't know but we're gonna move on from that one and like i said you love throwing them hand signs up i don't know i don't know girl wicked Ooh, you have became wicked ever since you caught yourself wanting to mess up somebody's marriage but yet you don't understand what kenya doing when she was flirting with apollo okay because remember you and phaedra were good friends and y'all did not like kenya not one hill of a bean back then because you were rolling hard for um phaedra okay but now we riding hard for kenya make it make sense make it make sense no it is true you're trying to be an allies candy because you want that throne but sure as it said not letting the right hand know what the left hand doing you ain't gonna get it because you're not even seeing your enemy that's in plain sight around a lot of shit that's Kenya Moore, honey. If she don't stepped over everybody, and I do mean everybody that was ever on the cast, how bad she did Kim Fields when Kim Fields was on the show. You remember how she tried to pull out from under a chill that Kim Fields was sitting in? Do you remember that girl? So you best believe Kenya gonna come after your ass sooner than later. Just watch it, cause she always keep talking about Candy Burris is uh, the uh, real uh og as well as um 
but not really OG, but she's the breadwinner for the women that's on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Her bag is much bigger. She's the main person. She's the one everybody's checking for. Da 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 da. When people say all them accolades and they have like a little attitude behind it, they don't like you, can. And it's, it's a shame that you don't see it. She don't like you, and she's going to be coming for your bag because she even said, if it's anybody bag I'm going to come for, it's Candy because she makes the moors. And she done already told you that. In plain sight, out in the open. So when she come for you, don't act like you didn't see it. Don't act like you didn't know what was going on. Because we, such as myself, will be there to tell you, I told you so. Okay? You shouldn't align yourself with a lot of devils because you're going to come out. And when you dig one grave for them, you better dig one for yourself. Because nine times ten, you're going to be on tripped over all them empty graves and them going to land in your own that you didn't even think you would be in. Especially messing with that Clyde Davis. Okay? But anyway, um... Then you go about saying Kenya's attitude is a gift and a curse. I see her attitude as a com a complete curse. Mainly because uh, I'm like, Ma, you need to rein that shit in. You need to rein all that negative attitude that you can seem like you can only give to women. Women that got stuff going on. Okay? Kenya needs to check herself before she attacks others. Period. And you shouldn't be checking her. I mean, you should be checking her. Period. Okay, it's just fucked up how you constantly, you know, take up for Kenya. Uh, you take up for Kenya ways. You, you give excuses for why Kenya do a certain thing. And you understand her. No, that's, oh, child, uh-uh. I don't know what kind of realm y'all floating in calling y'all friends. But, uh-uh, with friends like that, like they say, you don't need no enemies, girl. And then you sitting up there, how she acted and tried to talk about Marlo in a charity event and bringing those two boys. When, hell, that's what it was about, mentoring young men. It should have been a lot more of them there instead of a lot of people that looked like they were out of place and they were extras. Okay, I'm just saying. And if you could show me a scene where Kenya was being humble towards Tanya or nice to Tanya, I want to go back and review it. Because what I seen, the how she treated King, I mean Tanya, any woman in their right mind would have been ready to get on Kenya. And I'm talking about using their hands and everything, facing assault charges and all that good stuff. Okay? I don't see any positiveness in Kenya. Only thing I see is a lot of loneliness, a lot of hatefulness. Yeah, she has beauty, but if you fucked up from the inside, all that fucked upness is going to bleed out into a run out into your uh, outside. And it's going to be like, uh-uh, it's a no-brainer. You crazy. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be around people like that. But Kenya has the brain. She has the body. She has the talent. But she better put other people down that she thinks she can run over. No, that's not how you play this game, okay? Go on and keep throwing up them uh, signs like you're part of some elite club, girl. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, even your attire has all of those things on it. But it just is what it is. Those who can see, see. Those who all won't believe, won't believe. Okay, it's just a state of mind, I guess, okay? And then you talking about, well, Tanya shouldn't have brought the smoke. She shouldn't have said anything about, uh, what do you call it, uh, the wig and how she presented it. And Kenya ain't going to ever apologize to her. And I'm like, okay, she's going to have to apologize for somebody. She's going to have to, even if it's the Lord himself, she's going to have to be uh, apologizing. Yes, she's not above reproach. No. So if she ain't getting ready to do it in this world when her head gets cold and they get that big book and they be reading her to, you know, fulfill, but they telling her, this is what you did, this is what you did, you don't find no remorse in what you did, and she's still going to be up there saying, I know, then we are, we know what she's going to go straight to it. Okay, bust it wide open. But you like, okay. And then you support that kind of friend. That you know she said some foul things. You seen her do foul things. But yet, you like, she ain't going to get no, uh, Ken ain't going to uh, get Tanya no divorce. So she waiting on it. She going to be waiting. I'm like, oh, okay. Then you know damn good yourself, Ken, for hanging around somebody like that. Because that showed me what kind of people you hang around. Okay. And, you know, you, like I said, you felt it was okay that Kenya shaded um, Tanya and the weird portion. You was all on board with that. Um, let me see. But, um, okay, all the way, money, coins. Well, you know, then she always say, you know, just piggybacking on the idea that uh, Tanya, you know, she shouldn't have brought... 
uh, her wig. The wig was just payback on what she did by bringing a cookie lady. And I'm like, but you didn't destroy uh, Cynthia the way you tried to destroy Tanya. Because Cynthia had a, a conversation with uh, the cookie lady. And she went back and told Tanya behind your back what she did. And then, I mean, you kind of nice, nasty, brought the cookie lady because you were saying you going to throw all this stuff off on Cynthia, which was a bull for bullshit, too. And so, why are you taking up for Candy? I mean, Candy, why are you taking up for Candy when she throw Cynthia under the bus, okay? She throw everybody under the bus, under the tra uh, Amtrak train, okay? But yet, you still hold nothing but loyalty to her. Okay, same way you did Phaedra until... Uh, she started wanting to play games with you. Okay? I'm just saying. It's a hot mess. And then you're going to say, well, mm, you didn't really care too much. Uh, so why you just didn't blame production? If production was telling you to ask these questions to Kenya in your confessional or it was being shown in the scenes that we were seeing at um, Eva's baby shower, why you just didn't say production wanted me to ask that question? But see, you had to put it off on somebody else. You had to look like the uh, innocent one. So, yeah, you full of shit too, Candy. Yeah, mm-hmm. But my deal is, <laughs> your whole thing was, uh, if Tanya can dish it out, she better be able to ring it back in because Kenya going to come full force hard. Now, can, um, Tanya is just trying to play the lady role, okay? She's trying to pay... Uh, pay attention to how she wants her brand to look. Uh, she has God in her right now, as I'm saying. She's shiny. She ain't going to go low when somebody go low on her. She really like, oh, okay, I'll get it. I'll get them. It's going to be a nice, nasty shade, but it ain't going to be detrimental. But, yes, Lord, I'm going to get her in my own funny way. So, if you can dish it out to Tanya, then she can take what Mark is dishing out to her. Okay, funny thing about karma, when you hurt someone real bad, you know how karma works. You know karma is going to bite you in the arse bad when it comes back to you. You don't know how it's coming. You don't know if it's coming straight forward for you. You don't know if it's coming uh, to your child, to your husband, to any family members that you do care about. But she coming back and she coming back with a vengeance. Okay, now you're trying to say candy. You take up for Kenya about calling Tanya a cunt. You're trying to say you don't know what a cunt is. And that's not a bad word. That's not something black women use. This, that, and third. And you're right, Candy. Like, we don't really supposed to be calling each other bitches. Okay? But we do that in a nice way. We do it in a bad way. Okay? That's why I don't really necessarily do it. Okay? Because I don't like nobody really calling me a bitch. I'm not a dog. Okay? I'm not a female dog. And then, that's just something men have put together to demasculate a woman and try to degrade them. Okay? <laughs> it's a contemptible. Contemptible that you would even have it come out your mouth. Okay? And for Kenya to do that, she ain't nothing but straight up trash. And she's not good for the show, even though you say she is. Kenya's very vulgar to even be using a word. I mean, you should have just said slut. Okay? Would that have been better, Kenya, if she would have called the lady a slut? Would that have been more appropriate? Because that word cunt is extremely disparaging and very offensive. Whether you are a biracial child or you're just a black child or a white child. No, just like bitch, you know. Especially when you use it in a bad way. Them fighting words right there. Them cutting up words. So, like, give me my knife. Give me my gun. Give me my bat. Okay? Because oh, we finna go to war. Okay, cunt is... Let me give you what the dictionary said it is. It says, it is one of the most hateful and powerful examples of verbal abuse in the English language. Next time you and Todd get into it, a real heated argument... I hope he call you a cunt, Candy. And then you can try to ascertain in your brain that that is a bad word. And you don't want it thrown at you. But see, everything has to be hitting you before you can find any type of wrongness about it. Okay? So you just laugh. You kick it about it. You thought it was nothing. But, honey, cunt is worse, worse than calling a person a bitch. Okay? It really is is all right then we got candy you know she's out there doing her little marketing thing well no she's doing her little acting thing with her marketing manager consultant whoever 
assistant and Don Juan. We already know what it is. She was going to play a lesbian part called Dre, but she couldn't make the rehearsals and stuff of that nature. So she tried out for another part and she got it. Some uh, show, I think it's on Showtime. I'm not ever going to see it because I don't pay extra for cable. I got the basic lineup. Okay, meaning what you would probably have seen in the uh, earlier days, just basic cable programming. Nothing extra, no Showtime, no, uh, shit, I don't forgot what it used to be called. HBO, all those little things that we had back in the 80s as standard. They ain't standard no more. You got to pay for each one of those. So, no, I wouldn't, won't be uh, seeing it unless I got somebody that actually downloaded it uh, for me on YouTube. And then I can watch it and give commentary on it. But other than that, yeah, she's supposed to be paying some, uh, some lady named Rosalind. So, uh, and it's supposed to be in July of this year on Showtime, I believe I was told. Okay. And then, you know, she's trying to get on... Uh, she's trying to say it's sad about Mark and Kenya and all the negative uh, aspects and viewers they're showing on the show of them because she's seen them be more nice and kind. It's a good side to them. But in the last part of your speak on it, Candy, you were saying Mark had, uh, he wasn't positive towards his wife. Uh, he was mad because the event had went over. He had paid extra money for that. The camera was still fil filming when they should have been already out. Um, he felt everything was too invasive. Uh, he didn't compliment Kenya. Like I said, he wasn't appreciative. And you felt Kenya had reached her boiling point, so it just went like firecrackers, okay? And you talking about you wanted the marriage to work because, you know, you had to see families break up, this, that, and the third. Well, hell, Candy. And you, then you're going to say they need prayer and counseling. I'm like, stop playing with the Lord. That that the Lord didn't put that together. The Lord didn't put it together. Okay, they put themselves together and hope the Lord witnessed it. And of course, we see what has been done. Both of them are full of shit. They both attacking each other, and it just is what it is. My thing, if Kenya, if you really feel that you a spoon coon, you a lady, you a survivor, leave him alone. I don't think you're divorced. Or because you ain't married, so you can't get a divorce. But just stop the charade and move on. Move on from him and then keep being evil like you are. And people have love for you to be on this show. Okay? Because Candy think your personality or how you get down is fabulous for the show. Okay? That shows what thinking she got going on in her head. So stop putting Mark down. If you ain't going to put Kenya down, don't put Mark down because they both doing the same thing. Same shit every day, all day. He just giving it to her and she giving it to the rest of the women on the show. Okay. Um. So all this little thing about who Kenya really cares about the show. She's really invested in the show. She loves the show. No, Kenya loves the spotlight and the money. Let's keep it real. See, that's why I can't get with you, Kenya. You too fake, foolery, fuckery, and you fraudulent with your shit. How the hell uh, Kenya love the show more than she uh, love anything else? Okay? No, no, no. She don't. She don't love the show. She love the money. She love the prestige. She loves the... um. The platform she has to do whatever she feels she needs to do. She likes that free promotion. Okay. So sit down and, until you're going to really speak on it. Just shut up. Pretty much. Until you really want to speak on it. And give us your true opinion without being chastised from Kenya. Then I'm going to see you in another light. But until that happens. Candy please. Candy please sit down somewhere. And then it just showed me you respect Kenya more than you do anybody on the show. Even more so than you do Cynthia. Even more so than you do Shamia. And I think y'all were friends at one point in time too. But I don't even see that. So the only person you truly have aligned yourself up with is Kenya. Because Kenya going to run her mouth. She's going to do what she want to say. And you're going to be laughing. But then when people get throwing heat your way for uh, taking up for Kenya, which you do. You say you don't do, but you do. Whether you're there filming with her or you're not. And you just hear about it. You are 100% uh, pro-Kenya. Until Kenya gets in your ass, she start making you look stupid, start coming for you, then you'll understand what we've been trying to tell you from day one, okay? But you said she's um, cool, she's genuine, she's just that and the third, but right now, in my eyes, she's still looking fake and fraudulent, and you're phony right back with her, okay? But um, I think that was it for... Um, speak on it uh, because Candy wasn't really doing anything but still taking up 
for her friend Kenya and all Kenya's grossly ways. Okay, but y'all get down in them comments. Y'all talk, tell me what y'all thought about her speak on it. Uh, rendition of what she felt. I'm calling the Illuminati bully, bully camp, and she's a part of that bully camp. Uh, and also, basically, I can't go too much into it because I did go over. Uh, just take a look at those pictures. One of my uh, family members wanted me to do a, a, a side-by-side -side comparison from when Candy was little all the way up to she started getting to know uh, what she wanted to do. And that was be a performer in the industry. Uh, entertainment industry and her mother helped her get through there then we were seeing pictures of her and how she was going with escape the group that she and tiny formed from what i understand and um made everything work because her mother was really carpooling them making sure they would dress right appropriate the hair was done to be able to put them out in front of an audience and let the audience dictate whether they're a good singing group uh, and all that stuff and then you take candy when she was basically fooling with a married man and you know showing her ass having a baby when she knew contraceptives was out there yeah that's all tlc was about even damn left i was wearing the uh condom so what what happened candy you just want to fuck up somebody's life where you not you and block not using the condom i don't understand girl make it make sense because yes Protective measures were out there, but you just threw that to a side because you thought you were going to take that woman's man. But, nope, that didn't happen. Then you went on trying to uh, be with a man who had, I think my family told me, 9 or 12 kids. I can't remember, but I know it was over 5. And Mama Joyce wasn't happy with that. She said, oh, hell no, I didn't work this hard and come this far with you trying to be, you know, in a girl group and I don't throw all my money away. Mm-mm, we ain't finna let all that money go. And then he was shortly executed. Uh, shot in a parking lot stripper club parking lot then you start messing with todd and you know the history of todd we ain't even gonna go there because everybody saw it witnessed it and we moved on but yeah candy has a lot of fakeness and phoniness about her and mama joyce have definitely invested a lot of time and energy and money and she ain't got time for todd to be coming around talking about he finna take her wealth away from her you know mama joyce would go down swinging to her last breath before she let todd tucker come in and take anything that she started with candy now it's questionable and it's plausible that you know her son was a sacrificial tool for candy to progress or you know was it something a little bit more sinister but when you take a person's life uh for a ritual pagan type uh practice then that that's the, the, the lowest sin you could probably do even though a sin is a sin and no sin is worse than the other sin okay in the lowest eyes but i'm just saying and then you got your daddy i mean damn you want your daddy to marry you does he not just want to be on film and why we don't catch you with your daddy and getting that daddy love? Or what's the true tea on that, Candy? What well, is the true tea? Because we see Mama Joyce, we see your aunts, we see your friends, but we'll never see your daddy. I'm questioning that. I'm questioning, Candy. I need answers, baby. We over at the Family Affair. We need some answers, okay? Because I can't see how you're a little one and not the other one, but you said uh, you loved your dad and you let him marry you, but we don't see anything of loving lovingness from you and him. What's up with that candy girl? But that's all I had, guys. Put down your opinions in the comment section. Don't forget to bring over more family members to Family Affair Time. And we sit, we geek, kiki, we laugh, and we hug on each other. We kiss on each other. And we talk with each other. And we divulge with each other. And then we see each other another day. Okay? For another video. For another subject matter. Uh, talk. Okay? But y'all uh, definitely continue to share my videos, like my videos, and I will see you next video. Okay. But I really hope that sister, that half sister don't get into the entertainment field. Because she's going to be fresh meat for candy. Mm-hmm. For those who hear, here, For those who see, you know what I'm talking about. All right. See you guys next video. Bye-bye.